so last week, uh, especially on Friday, we watched a bunch of videos to do with vertical circular motion, producing apparent weightlessness, okay, all of that kind of stuff. Today we're going to start getting into the mechanics of that. We kind of looked at the fun part of it on Friday. Today we're going to look at the mechanics of it, the math of it, okay, uh, and things like that. So the big thing we should have got out of Friday is this relationship. Centripetal force for vertical circular motion is forces in minus forces out. Because as we've said before, centripetal force is still net force. And net force is the vector sum of all forces. Okay? In order for something to move in a circle, there has to be a net force towards the center, which is why when we go in minus out, we get the net force towards the center. Everybody follow me there? Yeah. So the challenge with this mathematically is determining which forces are in, which forces are out, putting them in the right place. You don't even have to worry about making anything positive or negative. That's why we have the in minus out that takes that into account. Okay? So you don't have to worry about up and down and whatever. Okay, it's just in and out. That's, that's what we're looking at for this. Okay, so if I was on the bottom of this vertical circle, which force is out? Gravity is out. Okay, which force is in? Normal force, or if this was something being whirled around on a string, tension acting towards the middle. Okay, at the top of the circle, if we're on the inside, what's my, what are my forces in? Gravity and normal force provided I'm moving faster than what? What is there for that point in the circle that there isn't for any other place in the circle? Two words. Minimum speed. If I don't go fast enough, do I go around the circle? No. Okay, so if I go just fast enough to go around the circle at the minimum required speed, is there any normal force? No. no. Because I'm a projectile. I'm not pushing on the track. The track's not pushing back. As a result, I feel apparently weightless, and this force would be zero. If I'm going faster than the minimum speed, then, um, then I have some normal force because my inertia pushes on the track, and the track has to push back. All right. If I'm on the top of the circle on the outside, what force is acting in? Gravity, because it's still pulling down and down is still in. Okay? What force is out? Normal force. As long as I'm going slow enough that I still have some. Okay? If I go fast enough, I'll lose contact with the circle and then I won't push on the circle and the circle won't push back and I'll feel apparently weightless. Okay? Those are the only three situations we're, we're going to deal with. Bottom of the circle on the inside, top of the circle on the inside, top of the circle on the outside. Forces in minus forces out. Okay? All right, remember I was telling you about how you can relive your childhood? They really make a Hot Wheels track for cars, real cars. People are driving their cars around that for real. I would do. But whatever, some people do. Okay? Um, so yeah, if you go fast enough, you can stay in the corner. You can stay in the vertical loop. Okay? And we saw that the other day. Okay. Um, so with our loops here, okay, going around the loops, remember we said we have a minimum speed in order to stay in the loop. A roller coaster is always going to go faster than that minimum speed. Okay? Um, simply because it's, well, more fun because it's faster. Okay? But also less dangerous. And if you go through that vertical loop very slowly, you're going to start putting pressure on the track downwards because the track it's going to pull on the track downwards instead of push on the track upwards. Okay, um, and that's going to you know make people feel like they might fall out, which could be exciting. Okay, um, but generally it's way safer to just go through the circle really fast than to go just fast enough to stay in the circle. Okay, because if anything went wrong and you were going just fast enough to stay in the circle, there's a chance you could not make it. And even because it's a roller coaster, it wouldn't fall because it's attached to the pipe. But it might go backwards, okay? Um, and that you know that could be bad. Um, has anyone ever rid ridden the uh, roller coaster backwards? The mind bender for a while. They haven't done it for years, but one time when we went there for our trip, they had the back car on the train facing backwards. Okay. Like 
Mr. Dickey and I have ridden the Mindbender literally hundreds of times. Okay? When we got there, I'm like, oh, the back door's backwards. Get off. Okay? We we're like, we have to try this because we've ridden this thing forward so many times that now when we get on, it's like, yay, whoa, so much fun. I'm so scared. Because it's, so, it's old news. Okay? Whole new ride. Absolutely a whole new ride. When you can't see stuff coming and the forces are all reversed for you, wow, crazy. Okay? Um, but it does, mean, it does hurt your neck more. Because you can't see stuff coming, you don't know when to brace for it either, so you kind of get shook around a little bit more. Okay? Um, where on a roller coaster are you going to get thrown around the most? I mean, sorry, which car on a roller coaster are you going to get thrown around the most? Front or back? back. Yeah, back. Okay? The back car is going to throw you around the most. Just because the, the rest of it is you're attached to it, it's already going into another part of the track when you get there, and so there's this kind of whipping action that transfers through the train. It's actually what derailed it on the mind bender back in the 80s when they first built it. Okay? So, weird thing about the mind bender, it was designed and fabricated in Europe, and all the parts were shipped over and assembled. Major, major problem. The persons responsible for design and fabrication were not present at assembly. This seems like something that would be common sense, but apparently it's not. Okay? And when it was assembled, in order, in the interest of getting lots of people on at the same time, <coughs> they made the trains five cars long. Three cars is the maximum length of the train for safety. So as they went whipping around the corners and went through loops, they, it started, the front started to turn while the back was still in the loop and created a torque on the, on the back car, okay? which eventually loosened the parts of the car and caused it to fly off. And of course, when one car goes, the rest of the train will be taken with it. Okay? And the whole thing derailed and people were killed. Okay? Um, so always follow instructions when assembling stuff, I think is the lesson to be learned. And Send the person who designed it over to supervise and oversee assembly. Also important. Yes, there were unfortunately people on it. Yeah, it's a big thing in the in the eighties. Okay, where uh, when that roller coaster went off the track. Okay. Um, so let's try this one here together. I'm going to calculate the minimum speed for this roller coaster here, okay? So we've got a vertical circle. We're on the top, on the inside. <laughs> okay? Um, and we're trying to calculate the minimum speed. So when I'm drawing my forces on here, I got force of gravity, anything else? No, I don't have any normal force because I'm going the minimum speed, okay? It's the only time there won't be a normal force, okay? But it's something that we get quite often. What's the minimum speed for this loop? What's the minimum speed for this loop? So gravity is my only force. So when I do my FC equals forces in minus forces out, okay? I've got one force in. Do I have any forces out? Not at this point. There are no forces out on the inside of the circle. So no forces out, only one force in, and I'm left with this. Fc equals Fg. Okay? Um, so our givens are radius, 9.0 meters, and gravity, 9.81 meters per second squared. Okay? So we want to solve for the minimum speed. What's the formula for Fc? V squared over R, okay? Equals M times G. What's going to happen to the M? Yeah, it cancels. Okay? It doesn't matter what's trying to go around this loop. The minimum speed is the same. All right, we're trying to solve for V, so we're going to multiply both sides by R, and then we're going to square root, okay? Remember I said that you'd be surprised how often the formula ends up being the root of GER, okay? Like it happens in all situations. 
Okay, so V equals the square root of G times R, so 9.81 times 9. So we're looking at like just a little more than 9, probably 9.4. We'll punch it. 9.81 times 9. 9 point, oh, wow. That's awesome. 9.4. That's like I remember it. Okay. 9.4 meters per second, okay, is my minimum speed for that loop. If I go slower than that, there, I could fall out of it. Now, again, a roller coaster is not going to fall out of it because it's got wheels on both sides of the rail, okay, to prevent exactly that from happening. Okay, everybody all right with what we did there? Okay, all vertical circular motion problems essentially work the same way. You set this up, put in what you know, solve for what you're asked to solve. Okay, it's a bit of manipulation, but nothing crazy. Okay, so there's what we did. Okay, and we got 9.4. Okay, so under these conditions, the rider would experience apparent weightlessness because the rider and the cycle are falling freely towards the center of the circle. So if there's like a minimum speed requirement, is there like a maximum speed? Uh, probably, if we're talking about what force the, the tens, tensile strength of the, of the iron or steel is used to make the, the track, yeah, there's probably a maximum speed as well, right? Because there's only so much normal force that that could exert back before it would bend or, yeah. Okay. I'm sure that that maximum force is more than the human body could withstand it anyway, so I'm sure we're good. Okay. They generally overbuild things like this, just safety. Okay, I think I have... Okay, I want you guys to try this one. It's like the, the example we just did, it's just different numbers. Okay, so 700 kilogram roller coaster goes around a vertical loop with a diameter of, diameter of 50 meters. Okay. What's the minimum speed the roller coaster has to have at the top to stay in the track? Okay, so I'll give you a couple minutes on that one. So, same as any um, other problem, we obviously want to write down our givens. The radius is 25 meters because they gave us the diameter. Okay, um, and we're looking for the minimum speed, and we know gravity. Okay, and we know the mass, but it's irrelevant. Okay, um, so FC equals forces in minus forces out, okay? There's only one force, and it's gravity, and it's in. So there are no forces out. We only have one force in. MV squared over R equals M times G. The M's are going to cancel. V is going to be the square root of G times R, okay, which will be the square root of 9.81 times 25, okay? All right, so we're looking at a minimum speed here of 16, or sorry, 15.7. We have three significant digits there. 15.7 meters per second. Okay, questions on that one? About as easy as they get. Okay. Okay, let's have you try number two. Okay, because number one is just like the two we've done already. Okay, try number two. We're looking for the maximum radius of a roller coaster loop um, if it can be negotiated with a speed of 20 meters per second. In other words, that 20 meters per second is your minimum speed. So, same rule as before. FC equals forces in. Minus forces out. Because we're dealing with the minimum speed, there's no force out. Okay? There's just going to be mv squared over r equals m times g. M's are going to cancel, but this time we're solving for r. So I'm going to multiply both sides by r, divide both sides by g, okay? and I'll have um, 20 squared okay? divided by 9.81 will give me r, and that should come out to 40.8 meters. Okay? Everybody all right with that? That is a very big 
Okay. To give you an idea, the loops on the mind bender have a radius of about seven meters. Okay. Now, the mind bender does not go the minimum speed through those loops. It goes way faster than the minimum speed through those loops. But still, this is a huge loop. Okay. And they don't generally build roller coasters with loops that big. Okay. All right. So this is the bucket of water trick that I no longer do. Well, it's fun, except that you know, ice cream companies cheaped out and started building plastic handles instead of metal handles. Because back in the day, metal handles. Yeah, plastic handles don't hold up. They cannot exert enough tension to hold the bucket when rotated at the speed necessary for me to not get wet. So I don't do this demo anymore. Okay, and this one shows it even worse. They're like, somebody tied a rope to the bucket and started winging the bucket around on the end of the rope. Like, that's like, okay, what are you doing with that? Are you just trying to throw it somewhere? Like, so uh, here's what we're doing in this one here. Bucket of water, mass of one and a half kilograms. So there's a liter and a half of water in there. Okay, um, is spun in a circle on a rope. The radius of the circle is 0.75. So we've got mass, 1.5 kilograms. We've got uh, radius, 0.75 meters. Okay, I'm recording this, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and the speed of the bucket is three meters per second. Now, here's the bad part about this question. Is the speed of the bucket three meters per second everywhere in the circle? It is not, okay? They're kind of making that assumption with this, so we're, we're gonna have to kind of go with that, okay? Um, so what's the tension in the rope at position C? Okay, so we're saying, all right, here it's moving at three meters per second, okay? And we want to find out what's the tension, which is acting like normal force, because instead of a track, it's a rope, okay? Uh, we want to figure out what the tension is. So, Fc equals forces in minus forces out. All right, force in is tension, force out is gravity. So we can move to this then as our next step. Fc equals um, force tension minus force gravity. Okay? They want me to calculate force tension. So what do I do with gravity? Add it over to the other side. So remember how we were saying you feel the heaviest at the bottom of a roller coaster loop? Well, this bucket would feel the heaviest at the bottom of the loop as well. If you were the person whipping it around with the rope, okay, you're going to have to hold the rope the hardest at the bottom of the circle because it'll have the most tension there. Okay? So we're going to add Fg. That's how we get a bigger number. Okay? So the tension in the rope is not the centripetal force. The tension in the rope is greater than that because it has to not only account for your inertia, but also for the force of gravity trying to pull this tail out of the circle, okay? Um, so that's going to equal force tension, and then we just have mv squared over r plus m times g equals the tension force, and we just plug in our numbers here. So 1.5 kilograms, right? Times 3 squared, they told us it was moving at 3 meters per second, and the radius was 1.75? No, 0.75. And plus 1.5 times 9.81. Okay, everybody follow what I did for method there? Alright, so 1.5 times 9 divided by 0.75 plus 1.5 times 9.81. Alright, so we're looking at uh, 32.7. We have three sig digs. Right. No, we have two sig digs, so 33 newtons would be the tension in the rope holding the bucket. Okay, everybody all right with that? So that's where these problems start to get a little bit more complex in terms of algebra. Okay, uh, you know, if it, if it gives you the, let's say, the apparent weight you know, or something like that, you might have to calculate V, so you'd have to, you know, do this, this subtraction operation and then do the multiplication and division that comes along with it. It's just algebra. As long as you understand the concept of forces in minus forces out, I have confidence that you guys can handle the algebra. Okay? Okay. 
Okay. Um, I want you to try number three. Because we've already essentially done one and two. Try number three. Okay, give you a little bit of time on that. <coughs> All right, so on this one, we've got a rock attached to this rope, and it's spun in a vertical circle. So we know the mass, okay? We know the mass is uh, 0.98 kilograms, and we know that it's attached to a 0.4 meter long rope, okay? Um, and it says here that the tension is 79 newtons, okay? And that's down, which means at the top of the circle, Okay, it's right here. What else is up here at the top of the circle? Gravity, yeah. Okay, so we're dealing with the top on the inside of this circle. You can never have something that's attached to a rope that's on the outside of the circle. It's not possible. Okay, you actually have to have a physical circle that you can sit on top of to be on top of it. Okay, um, so we're going to have force centripetal equals forces in minus forces out. There aren't any. Okay, so what we're left with then is this. Fc equals force of gravity plus the force of tension. Because they're both in. It's forces, plural, in. Minus forces, plural, out. Okay, uh, so now if we're looking for, uh, we're supposed to be looking for the speed, we're going to have mv squared over r equals m times g plus nine, or 79 newtons. So this all has to kind of stay in brackets, okay, from a like uh, order of operations kind of perspective. That needs to stay in brackets, and I need to move everything else. So I'm going to multiply both sides by R, and then I'm going to divide both sides by M. M is not going to cancel with this M, because it's in these brackets, trapped with that other operation, okay? All right, so the next thing we got to do then is uh, square root. Okay, so to get V then, we're going to have the square root of 9.81 times, um, what was the mass of that rock? 0.98 plus 79 times the radius, which was 0.4, divided by 0.98. Okay, so, oh, God, I can't does that. Just want to move it over here. Okay. Um, so we got square root of 9.81 times. Actually, I need more brackets. Okay. 9.81 times 0.98 um, times 0.4 divided by. All right, so it's got to move at two meters per second. Whoop, what did I screw up? You forgot to add 79. I forgot to add 79. That would be what I forgot. I was all concerned about the brackets. So that's kind of where we're headed to, and that'll be bottom of the circle, top of the circle, okay? Uh, all kinds of different situations. Again, the trick is what forces are in, what forces are out, okay? That kind of stuff there. Uh, that, one I don't want to do. that one we've already done. Okay, give this one a try. You got to read it carefully. It's um, it's a bit tricky. It's the way it's giving you the information is a bit sinister. It's not the right word. Underhand is better. Thirty-five meter loop. Radius. Anytime it says a loop this much, it's the radius. It's just the way we write things. Uh, if we don't say the, if we um, if we just say it's a loop and we give you a number, it's always by default the radius. Not the circumference, not the time. Yeah, just a wording thing. Convention that we do. Yeah. Um, 
if it says anything other, like the diameter or circumference, then you go with that. But if it doesn't say, it's giving you the radius by default. So we're looking for how fast the roller coaster is going. So we're looking for V through a 35 meter loop. If the riders feel two times heavier than normal, what do you feel? Normal force, your apparent weight, okay? So, here's what I have to understand. First off, we're dealing with the bottom of the vertical circle where normal force acts in and gravity acts out, okay? So that means that FC equals normal force minus gravity. Okay, and you feel normal force, we said. Uh, so we're trying to figure out mv squared over r equals, I feel two times heavier than normal. How would I calculate that? Right. How do I calculate this? What's 2mg minus mg? mg, okay, mv squared over r equals mg, again. Again, okay, so. The M's are going to cancel, and we're square rooting GER again. Okay? Like, honestly, if you had no idea how to solve a problem in this unit, like zero idea how to even start it, try that. It's right like 25% of the time. Okay? I'm not saying that that's something you should rely on, because after all, there's only 25% like picking C for every multiple choice question. But, okay? um, all right, so we got V equals the square root of 9.81 times, what was our radius, uh, 35 meters. Okay, so 9.81 times 35. So they've got to move at, uh, what do we have, two sig digs? Yeah, 19 meters per second. Okay, that's kind of where the, there's more manipulation involved. Okay, when you have to, when you've got one of the forces and stuff like that, like that one's just a wording kind of trick. Okay, all right, questions on that one? Okay. Try this one. We're looking for apparent weight this time. Okay, 75 kilogram person as they travel over the top of a 150 meter circle, that's the radius again, okay, at 22 meters per second. So on this one, we're looking for apparent weight. That means we're looking for normal force. We know the mass, 75 kilograms, okay? And we know the radius, 150 meters, and we know the speed, 22 meters per second. So they're going over the top of the vertical circle. Normal force acts out of the circle. Gravity acts into the circle, okay? And so we've got FC equals forces in, gravity, minus forces out, normal force. Okay, everybody all right with that? Okay, so I'm trying to solve for Fn, because I don't like solving for negatives, I'm adding it over here. Okay, and then I'm gonna subtract Fc, so I'm gonna have normal force equals gravity minus centripetal force. Okay, and so that will look like this, m times g minus mv squared over r. So we'll have our 75 times 9.81. Okay, and that'll be minus 75 times 22 squared divided by 150. Okay, so their normal force is 493, or we have what, three sig digs or two? I think we only had two, right? So 4.9 times 10 to the two newtons. Does that mean they feel heavier or lighter than normal? Lighter, yeah. About 60% of normal, probably something like that. Okay, everybody all right with that? Yeah, you're looking at funny. Did I do something? Oh, okay. Or I did. Stranger things have happened. It's not very strange for me to do it wrong. 
All right, let's have you try this one. Okay, so we want the vomit comet. Okay, we want to know how big of a circle, that means radius is what we're looking for. Okay, does it have to fly in to give riders a feeling of apparent weightlessness as it flies over the top of a vertical circle? Okay, so in this one, all we have is the speed. 210 meters per second, and obviously acceleration due to gravity. We're going over the top of a vertical circle, okay? So gravity will be acting in, and what's acting out? Nothing. Normally, normal force would act out, but they're weightless, or apparently weightless, which means there is no normal force. So what we're left with is Fc equals forces in minus nothing, because there is nothing to minus. There are no forces out here, okay? And we're going back to mv squared over r equals m times g. This time we're looking for r. M's are going to cancel, and we're just going to switch the g and the r. Okay, so we'll have that r equals v squared, 210, over g, 9.81. Okay, is that a big circle? Yes. It's almost five kilometers, yes. It has to be a big circle, okay? They, I mean, you think about it, they're getting you 30 seconds of apparent weightlessness when they do this. That's a big circle, okay? And the g-forces upon pulling out of that circle, if you try to you know, do it any smaller than that, everybody would black out on the site, okay? So that's not an unreasonable number, a uh, five kilometer radius circle. Because okay? you think about it, five kilometers means they're gonna drop 5,000, actually 10,000 meters before they hit the ground. Okay, that's you know that's the height of a tall mountain in the in the can in Kananaskis. Okay, most of the taller mountains are around um, three thousand meters. Okay, so planes fly way higher than that. Okay, Mount Everest is ten thousand meters, thirty thousand feet, somewhere. There. Okay, so our mountain's one third that high. It's a long time to fall. Yeah. Sorry, I think I said they were the size of our mountains. They're totally not the size of Mount Everest. Is what I was thinking. So I'm not really okay. All right. Let's give that one a try and then we'll call it. 